close, cause I'm about to let you know. Stick to your budget, you know your pace. Invested in the market, you know what you can make. Keep your dough safe, that's only if you serious about these money issues. Hello, hello, like I think you want to do medicine. Thank you so, so much, guys, for joining me. Now that we know so much about the banking products and services, I thought that today would be just a good day for us to learn more about banking facilities. Mandla, what do you think about that? Now is always a good time. Well, that's what my mom keeps telling me. So let's do it, Sissy. Good for her. So apart from the products the banks offer, can you list some of the benefits of using a bank? No, for sure. For one, it's a safe place to keep our money. It's also a convenient place to keep your money. And because your money is safe, you have peace of mind. The bank is also a good place to get financial advice and also learn more about money management. No flies on you, Mandla. You've obviously got it all sorted out in your head. Now remember, we have learned how to set up a budget. We have also learned about bank charges. We know that bank charges and fees add up very quickly, so we need to monitor them. And that different banks have different fee structures. But what are these fees and what can we do to reduce them? Any opinions on this? Um, I think I've got it, uh, but just hold on a minute. Let me flip back through my notebook, just to make sure, if you know what I mean. Let's see. Um... Okay, uh, yeah, we've got it. ATM machines, and it says right here, using a self-service machine, that's the ATM of course, is cheaper than making transactions at the bank. Why? Because if you're in the bank, you have to use their personnel, and that costs the bank more money, so the fees go up. <laughs> Bottom line is, the ATM is cheaper and more convenient for you, the customer. Excellent. Now, what can you remember about debit cards? Debit cards. Okay, hold on, hold on. I know I've done my homework, but let me page through my notebook. No, just to make sure. Let's see, uh, no, uh, debit cards, debit cards. Oh yeah, here it is. Debit card transactions are even cheaper than the ATM. Why? Because the money does not actually leave the bank. Why? Because all the transactions are done electronically from one account to another. And what does this mean? It's cheaper because no bank personnel are being used and money does not have to be replaced in the ATM machine. Now how's that for some smart answers? <laughs> now don't go getting a big head. Just when I'm beginning to really admire your determination to be the best you can be with your finances. Okay, okay, point taken. I'm glad to hear it. But yes, those were smart answers. Remember, all banks provide information on their fee structures. So you must shop around to find a combination of value for money and good service that meets your needs. Now let's take a closer look at what a debit order and a stop order are all about. A debit order is an instruction that you give to the bank to allow a third party to claim payment from your bank account. This can be another person or company other than you or your bank. This is normally an amount that has to be paid each month like the telephone or electricity account. The amount may change from month to month. A cell phone account, for example, is not exactly the same each month, and the cell phone company claims the full amount you owe them from your bank account. Yo, that could leave you in the dwang if you don't keep a close watch on your calls. But how do I know that I can trust this third party to deduct the correct amount from my bank account? It's your responsibility to check your bank statements very carefully as soon as they arrive, together with your account from the third party to make sure that the correct amounts are being deducted. Oh, that figures. But what about the stop order thing you were talking about? Well now, a stop order is very similar to a debit order, except that a stop order is an instruction to your bank to pay a third party a specific amount every month. This amount cannot be changed unless you instruct the bank to do so. It's very important to understand the difference between a debit order and a stop order. Do you think from what we've just discussed that you can tell me what the difference is? Well, a stop order is when the bank is instructed to pay money from your account to a third party. A debit order is when a third party claims money from your bank account. Correct. Let's move on then to another important service, credit insurance. 
Credit insurance will come to your rescue if for no fault of your own, you can't pay an account or loan. In this case, the insurance company will pay the balance you owe. Now, how would you like to do another little check your knowledge test? Fill up to it? No, for sure. You just put up the list and let's make short work of it. Okay, take a look at this list of bank facilities in column A and then check out the explanations in column B and see if you can match up the correct explanation to each facility. All right, uh, bank card. What is it? Is it A? Extraction from here. Okay. No. You can get all the details. No. You can move money. Mm -mm. D? For refrigerator to come back, this is allowed to make. Oh, yeah, it's D. I've got it. Bank card is D. Often referred to as an ATM card or bank card, this allows you to make banking transactions at an ATM and is the key to your bank account. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Debit order. Is it A? No. B? No. C? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right, I've got a debit order is F. An agreement. What is it? An agreement you make with a third party that allows them to claim from and debit your account with an amount of money through your bank. The agreement may be for a fixed amount. Example, for an insurance policy or a variable, which is changing amount. Example, a cellular phone bill. Let's move on to the next one. Stop order. Uh, let's see, what is it? Stop order is A. The instruction from you to your bank to pay a fixed amount from your account at regular intervals into another account. This is a safe way for parents to pay your pocket money or for your household to pay their rent. Hmm, okay. Let's move on, electronic account payment. It's not A or B. Okay, that's C. You can move money electronically between your own account or to someone else's account if you know their bank details. Okay, let's move on to the next one. That's a bank statement. It's not A. It's Oh, bank statement is B. You can get all of the details of your transaction from your bank on a regular monthly basis, as well as at any time you want to see these details. Oh, smart. Let's move on to the next one, account transfer. Um, what is that, let's see, it's not A, B, C, D. Oh, yeah, I've got it, account transfer is I. Payment of accounts by electronic methods. Example, through the internet or an ATM. Accounts must be linked to a savings, current, or credit card account. Yeah, man. And then let's go to short-term insurance. Um, let's see. Short-term. Cover for personal property against loss. Cover for the... Okay. Short-term insurance is um, H. Cover for personal property against loss, theft, or damage. Example, car, contents of your house, jewelry, etc. And then long-term insurance, let's see what that is. That's E, which is cover for your life and disability. The last one is credit insurance, which is G. Cover for the repayment of debt in the event of loss or death. Example, your home loan. Wow, I must say that it looks like we all have a pretty good handle on banking facilities and a good understanding of what they offer. How did you enjoy that little quiz? Hey, it was cool, man. You know, I enjoy a little brain tease. It sort of gets the adrenaline pumping. Yeah, it does, ne? I also had fun too. Now, here's a little exercise I'd like you to play with your family. Find out if they have any insurance. Secondly, find out the type of insurance it is. And lastly, find out the company that they are insured with. Until next time, bye-bye.